Hello everyone, it is Press Any Button, and I have returned. Some could say that I am back even. And I'm here with another Unity series, because we finished the last one, and it's time for something new. Okay, so, as you could probably tell from the thumbnail, this is going to be a different series in that we're going to be tackling some retro arcade games. And the first one that I wanted to start off with was Space Invaders, because I saw it and I was like, this is probably simple, I need to get back into the game. And this will probably be something that I can figure out, I can finagle a way to make my own Space Invaders game. I'm not sure if I can say Space Invaders, so I'll probably just title this video Invaders, but we're going to start off and make a recreation of Space Invaders in Unity. Now one major difference in this series is that we're going to be using Unity's 2D mode. So what we want to do is we're going to go to New here on the start screen. And we're going to call our Project Invaders. And instead of having 3D highlighted, we're going to have 2D highlighted. Now we're going to click Create Project, and I'll see you when Unity loads up. Okay, so here we are back again in Unity. It's been a long time, but we are finally back. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is just mess around with how our inspector, our hierarchy, and all those things are set up. So, if it's looking like this, then you're pretty much good to go. I explained in the last series how to get things to this sort of state, so if, if you want to go back to the first part of the bullet series, you'll probably just spend a minute there just seeing how I get this layout. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at some of the differences of our 2D mode. So we're going to go to the scene view and right here, straight off the bat, we're going to see that as I press middle mouse and try to move around, I'm only getting movement along the X and Y axis. Many of you will probably be like, oh yeah, that's normal because you're just panning. But if I right click, also I don't have the same boxy node thingy over here that allows me to change the view. If I want that, it's press 2D, and once it's deselected, we get our normal 3D view back. But we're going to be making this game in 2D, so there's no reason for us to do that right now. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into the build settings and adjust our view so it would work on mobile, because that seems like the easiest thing to build for these days, and lots of people like quick mobile games. So we're going to go to File build settings and then we're going to go to player settings now as you can see from the last project we had uh, this width and height switched around actually so we're going to have width 600 and we're going to have the height as 960 and that should work out for us pretty well all right i'm just going to press enter there and i'm going to close these settings right here and as we can see, the view of the main camera, shown here, is shaped around the resolution of a mobile screen. If we take a look at the game view, we can see that that's working. And one thing that we need to remember is, okay, so we've got three aspects, we've got a bunch of different ways that we can view our game. But what we want is we want to lock it to what we've actually set, which is 600 by 960. And let's just go back to the build settings and make sure that we've got web player enabled. If it's set to another platform, all you have to do is just click web player and then switch platform and then close the window and you should be good to go. Now there's still some things that we can do to the main camera that will ensure that we've got a workspace, a view and a layout that is going to be conducive to a wonderful game creating experience. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the transform menu for the main camera and we're going to click on this little cog and we're going to press reset and this resets all of the main camera's properties to origin, so it's not minus 10 on the z-axis or anything like that anymore. We can leave the culling mask to everything. We can leave the projection to orthographic. One thing we're gonna change is the clipping planes, which I sort of figured out, but I'm not quite sure what the actual purpose of these is. But uh, if we go to the 3D, uh, view this best demonstrates what happens when we change some of the values for the clipping plane So we see that our near plane is 0.3 and we see that our far plane is 1000 What we want to do is we want to take that to about 5 So that everything in this smaller more compact area is shown instead of having to work in a massive really long and awkward area 
only things within this box will be shown because this is the main camera's view. So let's go back to game mode, not much to see there. So what are we going to do? Well, we're gonna right click over here. We're gonna go to 3D object and we're gonna select quad. Now there we have our little quad. He's loaded up, he's love and life. And the first thing that we notice with our quad is that it's a bit off center. So let's go back to that transform cog and then hit reset. Now we can't actually see our quad right now because as I explained, it's not quite in the area for the main camera to see. It's sort of just outside. If you can see that, there's a bit of a gap there. If I were to, oh, my bad. If I were to select the quad here and just move that in a little bit, switch back to the main camera, we see it there. But let's do this professionally. So let's take a look at what is affected on the quads transformation when we move it along this axis so this is the z-axis that we're affecting and if you remember we made the far clipping plane on the main camera 5 so what we're going to do is we're going to change the value of this on the z-axis to 5 and hit enter and then if we return to the game view we see that our quad is there and we see that everything is in order now our quad looks quite dull and quite boring quite dark too but we'll deal with that issue in a moment the first issue that we want to deal with is our quad not being as exciting as we want it to be so let's add a texture to it so right now i'm just pasting a file for an image into the assets folder and when we close this window and look at our assets we see that the asset has loaded up. Now because we're using a 2D view already, it's going to import the texture as a 2D UI sprite. And that's what we want, so we're just gonna keep that at that. If you were here for the last series, you would have remembered that we talked a little bit about this, but essentially what you can do is just change the type of the texture by using this drop down right here. But for our purposes, we're just gonna keep it the same. So let's switch to the scene view and let's find that quad. So we're going to select the quad in the hierarchy and we want a closer view of it. So we're going to hit F and now we're going to take this texture out of our assets folder and move it over onto the quad. And let's switch to the game view again. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. That That is the product that we want. There's a couple of issues with this. It's very dark, it's very small, the image has obviously been compressed, and we can deal with those issues actually. So on the transform menu for the quad, make sure you have the quad selected in the hierarchy, you'll see there are certain values for the scale of the object. So it's one in the z-axis, one in the y-axis, and one in the x-axis. We're not going to do anything with the z-axis because this is a 2D game and this we just want this to be a flat plane but we are going to do some things to the x and y axis now just like our bullets background this image is indeed 1024 by 2048 i might have said that the wrong way around but you get what i mean and that is a one to two ratio for our image so if we scale it by a certain value on the x axis we're going to have to have double that value on the y axis to retain the form of the image so let's keep going until we get something that we like so I'm gonna do it all right five and ten seems pretty good but we we do have an issue here which is that it doesn't quite fill up all the space the main camera is looking at so let's go to six and twelve uh, a bit better a bit better but let's try six point five and 13 oh, and 13 and that should be good to go if we want to make some slight adjustments we can we can just move this up just a smidge by the y-axis maybe if we want to be professional we can use the actual boxes to enter our values now we've left enough space for our player to move behind the barriers the next thing that we're going to do is make this background a bit more vibrant. And this isn't going to be a final background. I'll explain the purpose of this asset in a moment. But uh, this is just a good exercise on adding backgrounds, adding textures to objects and different things like that. Also, just a side note, we have a material for this texture that we've added, which was kindly created by Unity. 
once we added the texture to the quad. That's just a side note. Maybe some of you know more than me about materials and their significance and all that stuff. But I thought that was important just to mention quickly. To change the appearance and the lighting of the texture, we want to first select the quad and then we're going to go to the shader settings of the space invade background image, which is what I called this. And now we see that the shader is set to standard. There's a bunch of other things that we can look at here, but we're just going to worry about this right now. We don't want this to be standard because standard is a bit dull. So let's click on this drop down and then go to unlit texture. And now we have a clearer representation of the image. It's a lot more vibrant and it's a lot more true to how the image looked originally. Now let's explain what we're actually going to be doing with this image. So as I'm sure you all know, these barriers are actually destructible and we're going to be making our own destructible barriers. The purpose of this background is just to give us a template of where we should put our barriers, the general space that our player should be moving, and an idea of the general area where we're going to have our enemies. This is just to give us something to work off of so we've got some direction when we're developing the game. So that has been the first part of this Unity series. I hope you guys enjoyed that. And in the next lesson, we're going to be getting into something a bit more exciting. We're going to be adding a player, probably adding some lighting to them or messing around with sprites just to see what we can do with this 2D mode. Because if we're using 2D mode, we might as well make use of all of its components as long as they're relevant to the project. So I look forward to it. A new video should be out just around the corner. It's been good to be back and I'm excited for this new Unity series and all of the series that will follow after it, following the theme of retro type arcade games which I'm really excited to tackle because they are the classics and will hopefully allow us to practice our fundamentals with Unity so that we can progress to a more advanced level. Anyway, that has been Press Any Button. If you enjoyed the video, remember there's plenty more on the channel. If you want to subscribe, then you can do so, and if you want to comment, then feel free, be my guest, and I will be back another time.